Hey guys, it's Autumn and welcome to another day of Vlogtober. Today, I wanted to go over something that I feel is very appropriate for the fall and the winter. Everyone drinks wine. It's kind of a great thing to, you know, sit in your room, watch your scary movie, chill with your glass of wine huddled up in a blanket, you know? So I figured I would share with you a little bit I know about wine, give you all some suggestions, and I just want to say I'm by no means a professional at all. I just worked in nice steakhouses for like almost three years, so I have a pretty decent knowledge. So I wanted to go over some of the basics with you guys. Yeah, this should be fun. Throughout this video, I'm gonna break everything down between red wine, white wine, their subcategories for the different varietals, and then some wine suggestions for each one. So I'm going to put all of that down in the description with time, so if there's a certain type of wine you like, you can just click that time and it'll take you right to it in the video so you don't have to watch the whole thing trying to figure out what it is you want to know more about. Alright, so first thing I want to talk about is that there's two main types of wine that I'm going to be discussing, or I guess three-ish. There's red, there's white, and sparkling. I mean, there's rosé, but I'm not really going to talk about that because you don't usually see a whole lot of that in steakhouses, so I don't know a whole lot about it, to be honest. The types of varietals that I'm going to be talking about are just some of the main ones that you tend to see very often. Again, it's not limited to this. This is just what I've had experience with. For the white wines, I'm going to be talking about Chardonnay, Sauvignon Blanc, Pinot Grigio, and Riesling. However, like I said, there are others. Those are the ones I'm going to talk about. And then for the red varietals, talk about Cabernet Sauvignon, Zinfandel, I'm going to be talking about Merlot, Pinot Noir, Malbec, and Syrah slash Shiraz. Don't really know the difference, but they kind of go hand in hand. I don't know. So typically when you have a white wine, it goes best with sometimes pork, mostly like poultry or fish. And if you have like a red wine, it goes great with steak. Again, pork sometimes. And just different types of beef or hearty foods. When you're picking a wine, there are three main things that you want to look at. I like to refer to them as the three V's. You want to look at the vineyard, which is typically, you know, the name, St. Francis. Can you even see that? Yes. St. Francis. You want to look at the varietal, which is, in this case, Chardonnay. And then lastly, you want to look at the vintage, which is 2012. And it's also really helpful to know the region because, you know, there's some background information and some people like the specific climate or soil or whatever from different regions. So in this case, we have Sonoma County, which is a very popular one in California. So some of the words that I will be using in this video that a lot of people commonly describe wines are tannins, which has to do with the, the vine, the soil, and how long the skin of the grape touches the wine. That kind of affects it and it leaves your mouth feeling very dry. We're talking about acidity, which kind of makes it taste tart, which, you know, seems kind of obvious. I'm gonna be talking about, and describing wines as buttery and oaky, and those are pretty self-explanatory. Another word that goes really hand in hand with buttery is creamy, which means, in most cases, for like a red wine, that it's really smooth, and for a white wine, it's very buttery. Possibly going to be using the word complex, which means that when you initially taste it, it has one flavor and then by the time you swallow it, it has a different one. We're going to talk about how crisp they are, how earthy they might be, and velvety, which really just means it, it tastes silky and smooth in your mouth. And then dry, which means it's not sweet. So there's sweet and then there's dry. Some champagnes and sparkling wine use brute. That also means dry. Lastly, the biggest thing that you'll hear when describing wine is body. There is light body, medium body, and full body. And a great analogy that I've always used that I've been taught in like previous restaurants and stuff that I've worked at is to compare it to milk. So skim milk is going to be much like your light body. It's real thin. It just doesn't really stay in your mouth or linger. Your medium body is going to be much more like a 2% milk. Your full body is going to be like whole milk. It kind of stays in your mouth. It's really thick. You, you kind of know where I'm going with this? Yeah, so that's kind of a great way to think about light, medium, full body. So firstly, I'm going to be talking about white wine. Like I said, this is great with poultry, fish, maybe pork. I'm going to start with the lightest body to the fullest body. And again, this is kind of vague, but this is 
my best interpretation. I also just want to take a second to say that this is not sponsored in any way. This is just from my experience, just from what I've tried and what I've seen and what have people have brought into work. And I thought I would pass on the information for others who want to learn. So the first one I'm going to be talking about is Riesling. I don't really think Moscato is that great. It's usually cheap, so I'm not going to be inserting that. So this is going to be like the sweetest type of wine that I'm going to be referring to. It is the lightest, it's sweet, but it is a little bit drier than Moscato. Moscato is just like straight up sugar. Firstly, there is Bluefeld, which I don't have a bottle of. I have so many bottles, I couldn't find some of them, some of them I don't have. But Bluefeld is a great one. And I guess I should also say that Riesling is of German descent. So a lot of times you'll see German Rieslings and those are the ones that everyone likes the most. Because that's where they came from. So the first one I'm going to talk about is Bluefeld. I don't have a bottle of it. It is German. In my opinion, the sweetest out of all of, the, all of these. Then there is Chateau Saint Michel. This one is from Columbia Valley. So this is not German. And this one in particular is 2013. So this one has hints of crisp apple and it has a subtle mineral flavor. Can't get that out. So they also made another Riesling, St. M. I mean, you can kind of see the similarity. This is also made by them. And it's from 2012. I like the really tall, skinny bottles that they have. This one's prettier in my opinion. This one is a little sweeter and, and it has a peach aroma and a slight stony flavor. These are all on the cheaper end. So next, I'm going to be talking about Sauvignon Blanc, which is usually light to medium body. It's a very crisp white wine, and it's typically very citrusy, so it has lots of grapefruit flavors and like orange, lime, lemon, things like that, so pretty acidic. The first one that I'm gonna talk about, which I, again, do not have here, I, don't, I could not find a bottle, is Craggy Range. This one is from New Zealand. They typically are from New Zealand like the Seeker is another great one, um, but in particular the Craggy Range is a little bit smoother in my opinion. It has citrus blossom, lime, jasmine, and it has a faint fresh honey taste, like a note if you will. The next one I'm going to talk about is the Mary Edwards, which again I couldn't find a bottle of it, but I do have one somewhere. This one has floral and just fruity notes, not so much emphasis on the citrus. And it has like peach, pear, some melon, a little bit of mango. And then lastly, you have the cake bread. Oh, I guess I should say Mary Edwards is from somewhere in California. I don't remember off the top of my head. And then we have Cake Bread Cellars. This is a really big name. It is 2012 from Napa Valley. So also a California wine as opposed to like a New Zealand one, which is kind of more popular. This one is aged in French oak barrels. So it has a slight oaky sort of taste, but again, still gonna have lots of those citrusy flavors. The Craggy Range in that case is gonna be the cheapest. Mary Edwards is a little bit more expensive and Cake Bread is kind of one of the nicer Sauvignon Blancs. I'd say the cheapest though that is also very great is the Seeker. The next type of white wine I'm gonna be talking about is Pinot Grigio. This one is more of a medium bodied white wine. It typically has different flavor profiles like lime, lemon, pear, white nectarine, apple. It's usually very crisp and it's not quite as acidic as like a Sauvignon Blanc. It's a floral aromas and you can usually taste like hints of honeysuckle or honey in these. Only one I have to show today is Capisaldo. This is a cheaper one. This is not very expensive and this is from Italy and most Pinot Grigios are from Italy. That's where it originated. It's another great one that I do not have with me today is Marco Faluga. I think that one's better. It has a little bit of a better body and the fruit flavors are more complex in my mind. Not too expensive. The Marco Faluga isn't very expensive either, so either of these are gonna be a good choice. Next type and final type of white wine I'm gonna be talking about today is Chardonnay. This one is the most versatile, I guess you could say. It can be medium to full bodied, typically more on the full bodied. Some are really oaky and earthy and minerally and others are a little bit more on the fruity side. They typically have hints of like vanilla and butter that you can taste, sometimes caramel that comes from the oak. They have more of a citrus flavor if they're from like a cooler climate and if they're from a warmer climate they're gonna have more tropical fruit flavors. So the first two I'm gonna be talking about are Darcy Kent and Wente. The Darcy Kent that I have over here is from 2012 and it's from the Central Coast in California. 
and then the Wente is from River Ranch. These are both from Livermore, California. All right, so the Darcy Kent be more tropical in flavor, and it doesn't really have an oaky taste at all. It has more of like kiwi and guava taste in it, and like a little bit of like lemon peel. Whereas this one is gonna be more like a Kendall Jackson, and has a little bit more of an oaky and buttery flavor, and it's pretty affordable. The next one, which is really awesome, is Rombauer. This one that I have is 2004, from 2014, also from Napa, California. And this one is like a massive butter bomb. It has lots of fruit. It is super complex. Like this one has so much flavor packed into this bottle. It is so awesome. I were to recommend a Chardonnay, it would hands down be this one. And they make other types of wine too. They're all really good. Like all of their wines are really complex, but this one's probably the best in my opinion. The next two are more of your high end one. This one's usually about as a mid range. These are a little bit more expensive for Chardonnays. We have the Pats and Hall from the Sonoma Coast, and also the Cake Bread Cellars. Again, both of these are huge names. 2012 from Napa Valley. Everyone always tends to love these. Pats and Hall has more tropical flavors, such as pineapple, guava, things of that nature. This one is also pretty fruity and too, very well balanced. And again, everyone t tends to like this for a Chardonnay. But out of all the ones I've shown you today, if you're gonna try one, this is the one you need to try. All right, so next, I'm going to be getting into the red wines. And again, I'm gonna start from the lightest body and move my way to the fullest body. I'm going to talk about the Mayomi Pinot Noir. Everyone seems to love this one that tries it. It is from Monterey County, Sonoma County, and Santa Barbara County. And this one is pretty fruit forward. It is very, it's more medium body, I would say, than a light body. You wanna start drinking red wine and you don't really know what to try. This one's pretty well balanced. It just has a hint of spice, but like I said, mostly fruit forward. This is a good one. But something a little earthier, I would suggest the Argyle Pinot Noir. This is from Willamette Valley. This particular one is 2013. And if you want a good Pinot Noir, go to Willamette Valley. The Argyle also makes a few others. One of theirs that is really great is their Reserve Series, which is the Argyle Nut House. This is 2011, so it's just a little older, a little bit more creamy. And then finally, this one is about the same price point as this one is the Foley. This one has lots of like really deep plum flavors. It has a little hint of boysenberry jam. It is a very fruity Pinot Noir. Next, I'm going to be talking about Merlots. Really medium body they are typically more on the fruity side the one that I have because I couldn't find any of my other bottles today is the velvet devil which is a great one I highly recommend this one as you can probably tell from the name it is very velvety it is from Washington State 2013 and lots of good Merlots come from Washington State so if you want a good one just look at one from Washington State and you'll you're sure to find a great one this is another one kind of like the Mayomi where if you're not big into wine try this one and it'll be great. Next I'm going to talk about Zinfandel, more medium to kind of full body. And to me, these are usually a little bit spicier. This one in particular that I'm going to be talking about is the Predator. This is more, one of your more low end Zinfandels. And I find it funny because it says on the back that it would pair well with short ribs or a juicy burger. Not a really great way to sell your wine, but this is a good one. If you want something a little bit nicer, there's also the Saldo. This one is going to have very similar taste profile. It is also made by the same people who make Prisoner, which is one that I'm gonna go over later. Napa, California, 2012. It's a very interesting bottle. This is literally all it says, and then it has like, it's just a little label there. Very fruity one, a little spicy. If you like Zinfandel, you will like this. Black fruits and baked blueberry pie notes. A little bit of vanilla, a little bit of spice, and smooth tannins. Next, I'm gonna be talking about Malbecs. Also very spicy and more popular Malbecs are from Mendoza, Argentina. If you see one from Mendoza, Argentina, you are on the right track. It's going to be good. This one in particular, the Seeker, and like I said, they also make a Sauvignon Blanc, I believe, is from 2012, and it is also from Mendoza, Argentina and it is a little bit on the spicier side. Next I'm gonna be talking about Syrah and Shiraz, which are 
the same thing. They're usually categorized the same. So Shiraz is full-bodied. Tend to have very high tannins. Have lots of blackberry, dark chocolate notes, a slight hint of black pepper as well. So cheaper one that I'm gonna be talking about is the Penfolds from Australia. And this is 2012. This is a good one. This one's not very expensive. This also has lots of those dark fruits, hint of spice. But if you want one that is really great, try pretty much any Molly Duker Shiraz. This one in particular is the Blue Eyed Boy, which is awesome. And I'd like to point out that this is also from Australia. They tend to come from there. They're very popular there. This is a great one, but if you want one that's even better, try the Molly Duker Carnival of Love. Very good. Everyone tends to love them. The style of the bottles is very interesting. The next category is Cabernet Sauvignon, and these are usually always full-bodied, really bold wines. Lots of dark fruit can be oaky, can be fruity. There's all kinds of taste profiles for these. These are great with steak, meat, pretty much everything. The first one I'm going to talk about is probably one of the cheaper ones. This is Chateau St. Michel Indian Wells from Columbia Valley, 2012. It is more on the earthy side than it is the fruity side. So this one is a good one to start with. If you want something really fruit forward and full bodied, that is a very good one. I would suggest the Starmont which is 2011 from Napa Valley. This is a very, very, very fruit forward and affordable Cabernet Sauvignon. Next, I talk about two mid, low to mid point price ranges. I have the Feather and Clos Pagas. This one is from Columbia Valley, so same as the Chateau Saint Michel. And this one is from Napa Valley. So this has all the characteristics of a good Napa, uh, a wine, Working our way up, we have the Jordan Cabernet. Okay, this one's much earthier, much oakier. To me, it doesn't have quite as full of a body, but this is a great go-to if you want something that's not too pricey, but a little bit in the earthy and oaky kind of taste profile. Next, we have the Miner, which has lots of black fruit flavors. It has a little bit of an, a cedar taste as well, so it is gonna be pretty oaky. And wouldn't you know it, it is from Oakville, California. So if it's not oaky from Oakville, then I just don't know what to tell you. But that is a good one. Said working our way up. We then have Silver Oak. They make all kinds of vintages. This one in particular is from 2005. This is much more on the fruity side. Very complex flavors. Next, we have Dunn Vineyards, which this one's really cool and it has lots of sediment. I don't know if you can see that in the bottle, but all of like the grape sediment. It's a very interesting one. But yes, Dunn Vineyards. This one is from Napa Valley, and it is from the year 2000. This is definitely climbing up there into the two, uh, $100 range. And it is much more on the earthier and oakier side. And then you have the infamous Camus. This one is very, very bold, fruity, rich, really deep plum purple color. It is a beautiful color. And they even make a nicer one called the Camus Special Selection. Both of these are from Napa Valley. Don't really know why this would be much different and why you would have to get this one. Most people tend to just get this one and it is fabulous. This is more of like your old world sort of wine. This is Farniente. This one's much more earthy, oakier very old, has a very minerally flavor. Like, these are both in the 200 something dollar range. Very pricey. The last sort of category for the red wine I'm gonna go over are the red blends. And these always vary. This one is one of the most popular. It is the Prisoner. This particular one is 2013 from Napa Valley. And this flavor, it has a little bit of spice, but it's mostly just fruity. So many flavors from all the different types of grape that they combine to make this with. If you want something a little bit cheaper, I would suggest this one. It is called the Dirty Pure Project. They make it, and it's called the F-Bomb. Cracked black pepper, white flowers, and more of like an oaky cigar box flavor. A little bit of blackberry jam and strawberry flavors. It is a very velvety wine. And if you want something more expensive, one of the higher end ones is gonna be Chalk Hill. This is an estate red from Sonoma County. Mostly consists of Malbec and Cabernet Sauvignon. 
47% Malbec though, so this is gonna be more on the spicy and earthy, oaky sort of taste. Last but not least, we're gonna talk about sparkling wine. Real quick, I wanna go over just a few things about sparkling wine. If it is not from Champagne, France, it is not Champagne. So for instance, Prosecco is sparkling wine, but it's from Italy because it's Prosecco and it's Italian, it's not Champagne. Cava is Spain's version of sparkling wine, so there's different regions that have different names for sparkling wine, but you can only call Champagne Champagne if it's from Champagne, France. First thing I wanna talk about this one, this one's usually about $13 a bottle. It is not too dry, not too sweet, and it is from Italy, as I mentioned, as hints of golden apple, white peach, and honeysuckle. So this is a more of like a floral flavor. And whereas when you get start getting into your champagnes, these are more mid-range, these are gonna be much more dry. Both of these say brute on them. Very good ones. I worked with someone and he used to say this one was his favorite. If you're gonna go big or go home, you're gonna get Dom Perignon. They make all kinds of different vintages. Year. But this is also Champagne. So, it says on the back it comes from the Champagne region in France. So obviously you've seen this one. This is like your big deal. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something today. I hope you go out and try some wine. You know, get ready for the season. Cuddle up. It's going to be getting cold if it's not already for you. And I hope you learned something. Again, I'm no professional. I was not sponsored to say any of this. This is just from my experience working in steakhouses. And I hope you all enjoyed. I will see you tomorrow. Goodbye. What are you doing? What are you doing?